Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. You can do it, camera. <laughs> you have to give it something sharp to focus on, otherwise it can't do it. Do it. <laughs> Okay. Are we going? Yeah, we're going. So, uh, there's a couple of online homeworks posted. That's the web browser stuff. There's several written homeworks posted. The first batch of written homeworks are due Monday. Yes? Yeah, I was going to ask when the written homework is due. So, each one of the written homeworks uh, has the due date printed on them. So you can always check that. And then we also have the schedule, uh, that is to say the calendar, that also shows it. Yeah. Other questions? Yes? What's the thing about the quiz? Did you send like an email or a duck? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so quiz zero, you know, like, yeah, that? Well, there was a quiz zero that was supposed to be next week. That is to say three days from now. Uh, but the testing center said that they don't have the capacity to do it because they're um, like doing all these CLA exams. I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> oh, it's for freshmen. Yeah. For freshmen. So quiz one is like two weeks, two Wednesdays. Right, three plus seven days from now. Other questions? Okay, so today is the 25th. And the first thing that we have to talk about today is absolute value. Okay, so absolute value of x is denoted with vertical bars on either side of the x. Its definition has two parts. Because it has two parts, you have to write this very large curly parentheses. The correct name for curly parentheses is brace, but no one can remember that. <laughs> so this is x. It is x when x is uh, positive. It's uh, 0 <coughs> 0 when x is 0 and it's negative x when x is negative. So that's the definition of absolute value. So m many or even all of you have seen this kind of thing before. So let's have some examples of its use. Uh, so for example, how about what is the absolute value of 3? It's 3. <laughs> which, which clause? These, these individual lines are referred to as clauses if we name them numerically as clause 1, clause 2, and clause 3. In order to evaluate this, which clause did we use? Clause 1, right? Because, because clause 1 is what you do when the input is positive. And what's the input here? 3, which is positive. So the absolute value of 3 is 3. What's the absolute value of negative uh, 4? So what is it? 4, right? But the definition says that it's negative negative 4, which of course is 4, right? So let's look at something for a moment. Let's just look at just negative x. Is it possible under any circumstance that negative x could be positive? Is, it, is that OK for negative x to be positive? Under what? Give me an example of a case where negative x could be a positive value. <laughs> if x is negative 4, <laughs> for example. Because if x is negative 4, then negative x is negative negative 4. So just because it says, just because it says negative x, that doesn't mean that something that is negative is coming out. Okay, good. 
Let's try another one. How about what's the absolute value of zero, Gesundheit? It's zero. <laughs> right, which clause did we use? The second clause. Okay, how about something slightly more interesting? What's the absolute value of three minus pi? And I don't want a numerical value. I want you to tell me the exact value. I, that is to say, I don't want a, a decimal approximation to the answer. Pi minus three. Well, what, why is that the case? Right. So let's name these. So to, get to, to make this evaluation, we had to use clause one. Right. To make this evaluation, we had to use clause three. To make this one, we had to use clause two. So now my question to you is, for this one, for this one, which clause will we have to use? Three. We'll have to use clause three. We'll have to use clause three because every school child knows that pi is about 3.14, right? So if you, if you have three and you take away 3.14, that's more than three. That means that this thing in the, inside of the absolute values is negative. It's negative. So that means that to come outside of the absolute value, the answer is negative, three minus pi. So it comes out as its negation. And then you can distribute that negative through. If you distribute this negative through, you get negative three plus pi. And then if you felt so inclined, you could write these in the other order, pi minus three, which is what you said. Any question about this one? Any question? Okay, so one brief remark about penmanship, and that is, you may have noticed that I write ones in that style, which is not a very common style for Americans, <laughs> just, to, just to put it flatly honest. Uh, you might wonder, why do I do that? Well, my question to you is, is what is the meaning of this statement? One minus 11, what was it? Absolute value of negative one? Do you see that there's a problem? Do you see that this could be interpreted as one minus 11 or as the absolute value of negative one? Okay, how about this one? What's that one? Unambiguous, right? It couldn't be anything else. And what's that one? One minus 11. These two are unambiguous, this one is ambiguous. So the last thing that you wanna do is confuse the greater, okay? Because then they have to assume if they're confused, you were confused, and therefore you, you shouldn't have credit, okay? So it's, it is imperative that you write something. I'm not saying you have to adopt this style, but I am saying it has to be clear, okay? Uh, by the way, these little hooks uh, that are all over the place, like these X's have little little hooky things and little hook on the on the pi there and on the one. Does anyone know the name of those? They have a name. Serifs. Serifs, like when you're in your word processor, and you could ask for a sans serif font. That means don't put the little don't put the little thingies on it, right? Give me something without the thingies. Serif. What does serif mean? Feet <laughs> means feet, the little, the little feet on the letters. Good. So <clears throat> we have a remark about scientific notation. So a number a real uh, is expressed is expressed in scientific 
notation when it has the form a multiplied by 10 to exponent n where <clears throat> two requirements one is less or equal to a is less than 10 and also n is in the integers okay so for example I could say give it give it to me in scientific notation so scientific notation so here's the first example how about one two three four so is this is this in scientific notation it isn't right it isn't for at least one reason it doesn't have any tin stuff okay uh, when you when you learned about this in grade school um, probably I suspect they they taught you to do it something like this and we'll do it the same way because it's a pretty good way so I'm gonna write the decimal point there and what we need what we need is we need there to be one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point just one non-zero digit at the present time how many non-zero digits are there to the left there's four we need there we need there to be just one so what I want you to observe is that if we moved this just one place if we moved it just one place then this would be one two three point four and then in order for us not to change the answer we have to say okay this would be multiplied by ten because if multiplying by ten would move it back so this, th this is the same as that one. That, that allows us to move it one position to the left. If we were to move it one more position to the left, the point, then it would be 1, 2.34, and then multiplied by what? 10 to exponent 2, because that signifies that, well, in this process that we're doing, we've, move, we've moved it twice. Okay? And if we do it one more time, then that will be what we want. 1.234 times 10 to exponent 3. Okay, now, is this, is this in scientific notation? Yes. yes. How about this one? Is this one? Why not? Greater than 10. What's greater than 10? Right, this number in front. The number in front has to be between, uh, sorry, I left something out this has to be an absolute value so those red absolute value bars that I just wrote I had previously left off <clears throat> uh, an absolute value this number has to be uh, between 1 and 10 so another example how about um, negative uh, 23 point uh, 89 please express this in scientific notation so is it already in scientific notation no what do we have to do with the point one position to the left And then times 10, and you have to write the 1 so that it will be in scientific notation. Okay. So notice that A, A itself is not between 1 and 10, but the absolute value of this is. Right? We have one non-zero digit to the left of the point. Okay. <clears throat> How about this number? Is this in scientific notation? Is it? No, it is not. It is not. Because why is it not? Yeah. 
you haven't written the ten part, right? So how many, how many, how far do we have to move the point? Zero positions. Well, we have to signify that. So how do we signify that? Times ten to exponent zero. Because of course, ten to zero is what? One. Okay. Now it's in scientific notation. How about? How about um, 0 0.000 um, 5612? <coughs> now what? Right. So notice that how many non zero digits are there to the left of the point? Zero, right? Because that one doesn't count because it's zero. So we need to move the point to the right now. We need to move it to the right so that we we capture that five. So that would be one, two, three, four positions. Okay. So if we move it four positions to the right, then a the a part would be five point six one two. And then now, what will be the 10 part? 10 to negative 4. Any question about this one? <clears throat> OK, we could go in the other direction. I could say, uh, so this is OK? So we could go in the other direction. <clears throat> and I could say, what about, <clears throat> give it to me in standard notation. How about um, 6.78 uh, times 10 to exponent 8? <clears throat> so what, what am I requesting of you? To move the point, okay. How far? Eight positions to the right. So, if we move it two positions to the right, it would say six, seven, eight. And then how many more positions do we need? Six more, which means we have to write what? Six zeros. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Any question about that? Okay. What about what about uh, seven point three two times ten to negative five? So now, what am I requesting of you? Four places to the left. Right? So if we move it one place to the left, it would be 732. And then we'd have four more places, four more places to go. So what do we need to do? Write four zeros in front, right? One, two, three, four. And then zero point that many. <clears throat> Any question about this? So you might wonder, possibly, why are we interested in this at all? Okay, the main reason is things like this. So here's a number. Do you recognize it? 6.203 times 10 to exponent 23. Yeah, <laughs> Avogadro's number, which always reminds me of avocado. This is a number from uh, chemistry. It probably is your first experience, but it's all over physics also. So would you please write this in standard form? No? I'll do it. Right, so then I'll move it three places, so to the right. And then now I need to move it 
20 more places. Ran out of pencil there. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Sorry? Read it out loud. Read it out loud? Avogadro's number. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, you know, these kind of things show up in science all the time. So another example would be something like this. 1 times 10 to exponent 80. What is that one? I mean, you can imagine writing out 80 zeros. Wouldn't that be entertaining? What is, what is this number? Or, you, or even this one. Everybody knows this one. A Google. Yeah, you know the, 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 the company that makes money hand over fist? The search company, Google? Actually, the the true the true way to write this word uh, this number is goo goal G O L, but and, and Google the search engine company meant to use this name, but they didn't know how to spell it, and that's, that's it's actually a spelling error <laughs> on their part. So this is Google. What's this one? This is Eddington's number. Eddington, and it's an approximation for the number of protons in the observable universe. That is a lot. Any question about this? Yeah. So, so it's for reasons like this that we use scientific notation. OK. Now we're in section 1.3, which is called something like radicals which is not nearly as cool as it sounds. So in the first place, we have something called square root. So the following are equivalent. that y squared is equal to x for a non-negative y. So that's a statement. This, this statement could be true, for example, if we substituted in some values. For example, we could substitute in y is 10 and x is what? 100. And then it would be a true statement. We could also substitute in y is, uh, say, 5 and x is 25, and then it would be a true statement. So this statement is equivalent to this statement. y is equal to the square root of x. So now, to give you some, some context, to give you some context about what I mean by this, a second remark, using <coughs> things that you already know, Suppose that we had something like 3y is equal to x, and I asked you to solve for y. Then what would you need to do? Divide both sides by 3, right? And if you did that, then the new equation would look like this. y is x divided by 3. So what I'm saying is that if I gave you this equation and I said solve for y, then the problem is, is that that 3 is over there, so you need to get the 3 on the other side. So on the left-hand side, it's multiply, and on the right-hand side, it's divide. Similarly, I could say, what if I give you uh, y plus 7 is equal to x, and I say, I want you to solve for y. What would you need to do? Subtract 7 so that you would have y is x minus 7. So what I'm telling you is that, you know, you want to solve for y, and the problem is, is that 7 is currently with the y, so you need to get the 7 on the other side. And when you get the 7 on the other side, the plus 7 on that side, well, it's 
subtract 7 on that side. This is multiply by 3 on this side, and this is divide by 3 on that side. And what I'm telling you is that this equation right here has, this y has exponent 2, and you want the y to be by itself. To get the y by itself, this exponent moves to the other side, and when it does, it's square root. On the left-hand side, it's squaring. On the right-hand side, it's square root. So, any question about the structure of this? <clears throat> okay, as a result, <clears throat> I could ask, for example, what is the square root of 100? Ten. Because in the end, you're asking yourself a question, what number could I square so that I would get 100? And the answer is 10. Now, I have some bad news for you, that you may have been misled about square roots in your previous experience. So here's something that I commonly hear from students. The square root of a, and it's wrong. The square root of 100 is plus or minus 10. No, that's wrong. Now, I agree entirely that if you square negative 10, if you do negative 10 times negative 10, the negatives cancel and you get 100. I agree entirely. But negative 10 is not a square root, is, is not the square root of 100. Why not? There's a reason and it's written on the page. It's this reason. It's saying that the stuff that comes out of the square root has to be greater than or equal to zero. Negative things can't come out of the square root. It's not possible. Okay, so then this, what's the square root of 16? 4. Is it plus or minus 4? No, it's 4. What's the square root of 36? 6. Is it plus or minus 6? No, it's 6. Good. Okay. How about uh, please simplify as much as possible. Simplify. And I want you to assume all variables positive. So the square root of, say, um, 72 multiplied by x cubed multiplied by uh, w squared. No, w to 4. Simplify as much as possible, assuming all the variables are positive. OK. <clears throat> so this kind of requires a little bit of strategy. And since this is the first time, I'll do it. So the first thing you need to do is factor that number, 72. So how does 72 factor? 8 times 9, for example. I agree. But we're going to need to factor it. We're going to need to factor those numbers more than that. So how, how, how further does it factor? OK. So can you agree that if we were to completely factor it, it would be 2 cubed and 3 squared? Two cubed times three squared times x cubed times w to four. Okay. So here's the deal: is that anything that's a, that's paired up, anything that's paired, can be smuggled out of the radical. So what I want you to remember is that three squared. Remember, what does three squared mean? It means 3, product 3. So what I'm telling you is that this right here, I'm pointing to a pair of 3's that are in product. So what I'm telling you is that this 3 can be smuggled out. It can come out. That 3 squared comes out of the square root as a what? 
as just a just a three. So it comes out as three, and then we have two cubed times x cubed times w to four. Okay. Are there any other pairs? Where? I don't see any pairs. I see here's a triple and another triple and a quadruple. Where's the pairs? Ah. So I think you're saying that to, to, to make an intermediate step, that we could write 2 cubed as 2 squared multiplied by 2, and we could write x cubed as x squared multiplied by x. And I'll leave that w to 4 for a moment. So notice that, oh, there's a pair of 2s, and there's a pair of x's. They, they, each of those pairs could be smuggled out. So this can come out, this one can come out. So if we do all of that, then what is outside of the radical now? A 3, a 2, and an x, right? And what remains in the radical? A 2, an x, and w to 4. Any question about getting to that step? So now, can anything else come out? W's can come out, right? That's because, remember, this is what, what w to exponent 4 means. It means w times w times w times w. So how many pairs can we make out of these w's? Two pairs. So what, come, what w stuff comes out of the radical? w squared. So this would be 3 times 2 times x times w squared. And then, square root 2x. And of course, this could be simplified a little bit to 6x w squared square root 2x. OK, so I did a whole bunch of steps. And it's not once, once you get the idea, you don't need to do this many steps. OK, so let's, let's do another one with, with fewer steps. So let's try that again. Uh, so how about square root of 243 uh, y to exponent 5 uh, times, say, a to exponent 8. And again, assuming that the variables are positive. Okay, how about 243? In order to proceed, we need to know how to factor it. How does it factor? It is 3 to exponent 5. <laughs> but if you weren't able to see that, maybe you could see that it's 3 times 81. It's 3 times 81. So 3 times 81, and then what's 81? 9 squared. That's the most convenient way to write <coughs> this stuff. So as for the constants, 3 and 9 squared, what, what can come out? Nine. The, a 9 can come out because it's paired up. Can, can the 3 come out? No, because it doesn't have a partner. Okay, so 9 could come out. What else could come out? one group of y and another one, right? Because here's five of them. How many groups, how many pairs can you, can you make? Two pairs, right? So y comes out once and again. And then how much a comes out? Four of them, right? 
because you can make four pairs. So A, 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 and then what's re what remains inside? 3Y. And then yes, of course, usually you would not write it that way. You'd write it as Y squared A to 4. Any question about this? <clears throat> okay, a few remarks. A pair of remarks. Is that uh, one, the square root of A times B, so A times B, notably that's product, is the square root of A multiplied by the square root of B. This is true. You can do this when A is greater or equal to zero and B is greater or equal to zero. Okay, and similarly, the square root of quotient A over B is what? Very good. So square root A divided by square root B. So I'm going to write one more that is, that is wrong. So if you're going to copy it, be sure and copy that it is wrong. So these are, these are true. Th these, are, these are good to go. And here's the one where students, that students do that's just flat wrong. Square root of A plus B is square root A plus square root B. So I'm going to write this and then cross, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to cross it out one, two, three, four times. Okay? No. Not true. The square root, square root does distribute across product like that. Product. And it does distri distribute across um, quotient, like that. But it does not distribute across sum. It doesn't do that. <coughs> so um, that allows you to sort of revisit some of things that are like this. So let's have another one. So how about something like square root of, say, <coughs> 64 uh, A to 9, B to 3. Well, according to that rule that's immediately above, you could visualize it in this way. You could say that this is the square root of 64 multiplied by the square root of A to 9 multiplied by the square root of B to 3. And this is, again, assuming all variables are positive. So now you can kind of do them each individually. So what's the square root of 64? 8. And then what is the square root of uh, a to 9? Alternatively, what, how, mu how many pairs can you get out? Four pairs can come out, right? An a multiplied by another a, another, another. So how much a will come out? a to 4, right? A to 4, and then there's one left inside. And then how about this one? 1B one can come out, and then there's 1B left inside. Any question about this? This is okay. Okay, one more of this style. So something like the square root of, mm, hmm, okay, 49 uh, p to exponent 5, divide by 125 
q to exponent 11. So all of that's in the radical. So what do you think? Use this rule. This rule will help us. So that'd be square root 49p to 5 in the numerator, and then divide by square root 125q to 11 in the denominator. And then this is really just like two versions of the previous problem, and they kind of just go by themselves. Uh, what can we do for the numerator? So how much constant can come out? Seven, right? How much, how much P? Right, a P and then another P. So then P squared, and then there's just one P left inside. And then how about constant? How much, how much of this can come out? A 5 can come out, right? Because this is 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, so it's, it's 5, 5, 5. We can take a pair of 5s, get them out, and then there's still a 5 left inside. <clears throat> and then how much Q can come out? 5, well, <laughs> I had 5s on the brain, apparently. So Q to exponent 5 can come out because that's, that represents 10 of them coming out, and then there's one more left inside. Any question about this? Yes? Oh, are, are you saying, I, I think you might be saying, would it be permissible to write it in this way? Yeah, yes. yeah this is just fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could you could put the this B, move it to the front, and then put both of these A and B under the same radical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of this rule. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have a new rule. Again, with the following our equivalent. <laughs> TFAE is a very common phrase in a math class. The following our equivalent. So y, uh, y to exponent n is equal to x, y is greater or equal to 0, and n is even. So by even, I mean divisible by 2. Uh, n is even and in the naturals. So this one is the same as this. If I gave you this equation, this one right here, and I said, I want you to solve for y. I want you to write y equal to something or other. Okay, the way that you write that, the way that you get the n exponent to move to the other side is with a radical. So if this was 2, it would be just like a couple pages ago. It would, it would, it would move to the other side as square root, like this, if that n were a 2 but it's, it's an n, so it comes over here as an n. So it's like a square root that's holding out its little hand there and holding the n. Okay, that's, that's the even case. The odd case uh, 
uh, that y to n equal to x with n odd. So in uh, so for example, three. Then again, I want you to solve for y. And how do you write it? Same way. Now you might be wondering, why did I apparently write more or less the same thing twice? Why? Why did I have to do that? There is a distinction between them, and it's right. The even case is like square roots. It requires this. It requires that the output of the radical uh, be greater than or equal to zero. So, um, for, for special names, when n is two, th this is called nth root. That's its name. Nth root. As in n and then th. Nth root. So when n is 2, that's square root. Square root. Uh, when n is 3, we also have a special name. What's the special name for when n is 3? Cube root. And then none of the other ones have special names. And the thing about cube roots is this. Uh, so, for example, what is the cube root of 8? It's 2. Because you're asking yourself, what number could I multiply by itself three times so that I would get an 8? 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8. Alternatively, you can look at it like this. You can say that this is the cube root of 2 cubed, because after all, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And now, when we want to smuggle things out of the radical, they don't, out of this radical, they don't come out in pairs. How do they come out? In triplets. They come out in triplets. So this would be 2. So how about what is the cube root of 16 then? Well, how do you factor 16? Well, 16 is 4 times 4, right? But this, is two, this 4 is 2 times 2, and that 4 is 2 times 2. So really, that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 4 of them, right? So this would be the cube root of 2 to exponent 4. How many? So do you see that we have enough to make a triple? How many triples can come out? One of them can come out. So it would be 2, and then how much had to stay in? One of the 2's couldn't, couldn't leave, and it's stuck in there. And now, here's the reason for, for this. What is the square root of, say, negative 25? And understand what's being asked. I'm asking you to tell me a number that when you square it, you get negative 25. There aren't any. There aren't any. So this is undefined. It's undefined. Oh, uh, yeah. Or even undefined. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, and this is the last thing for today, what is the, what is the cube root of negative 8? Is that, is that okay to do? What is it? What's the answer? Negative 2. And so let's be really careful about this and think about it. So what's negative 2 times negative 2? Positive 4 multiplied by another negative 2. 
negative 8. The odd radicals can deal with negative numbers. The even ones cannot. Have a nice weekend.